he played on the same team, but uh, with my short stint with um, Connecticut there, just that was there for like six weeks and, um, you know, just being new, I was, I was a first year pro and I had to deal with guys that were old. We had Wade Redden on our team, uh, basically, what is that? Like a hall of, fame, hall of Famer, but he's like a journeyman. He was like the best team Canadian defenseman for a lot of years. Um, but you know, they, they were great guys. To, they knew, you know, the situation and, and where guys were coming from and where probably they even came from. Um, and, and, but guys like yourself, you know, just making things comfortable for some guys, especially for me, I remember that you just, you know, reaching out to me, we lived uh, in the homestead suites there, a couple of doors down and I just came in looking for something. I can't remember what it was, but you're playing video games and just asked if I wanted to play on it. I was like, oh, okay. I was like, that guy likes me. That's a good thing. Cause in pro these kids need to realize that not everyone likes each other and, and there's competition for spots. So um, yeah, just having that. And then also like, as mentioned too, when we played against each other, uh, I was with Greenville, you were Chicago there and uh you know the benches and you're you're giving us some some lip to the team and to our, our coach i was like holy smokes i was like this guy this guy this is a guy we need on our team and just willing to sacrifice and do anything for for your team and to get that advantage right is uh, we've had i've had guys on that team like that but it just was i think that was introduced to me like i was like holy like that's this is real this is that's part of the game and um it's it's effective. I'm sure other guys saw it too. Yeah, we were we were talking before, and you were you were telling me the stories. I don't, I don't even remember them long. It's a, <laughs> oh, is it? You know, it, was, it would have been what 12, 13 years ago now, probably. You know, it's a long time ago. And uh, when I was young, I was I was crazy. You know, I, I can't even remember half the stuff I did, and I'm sure there's <laughs> stuff I did I don't even want to remember. You know, that's right. Of course, of course. So, that's what makes the stories great. And but that's what it's like, though, is trying to really um, show these kids that, you know, you got to play within the rules and do those things. They're not promoting wrong things here, but you got to do things way over your head that you're, you didn't think you were even, you wouldn't think you would do. Like, oh, oh, God, yeah. I you mean, you got to separate yourself from, from the guys and be totally different. And that's what's going to stand out to all these uh, people watching you. Yeah, for sure. And and today's game is different than it was when, when we were playing pro. I mean, uh, the American League when when we played, it was some days it was like a traveling circus. <laughs> it's a, it's a little bit different now. But uh, to be honest, I think hockey's it's gone great. Um, it, it's missing a little bit of grit. I think I, I watched a lot of the playoffs last year, and it's not as fun as not as fun to watch but entertaining uh, maybe, I guess. yeah like, I, I think i mean it, and being in in europe uh usually i don't get to watch the playoffs but with the covid stuff last year COVID time for the the playoffs so it was, it was nice to watch but it's it's not like the the i mean i'm sure you can remember the detroit red wings like colorado avalanche rivalries and in playoffs and stuff like that like i remember that as a youngster and i was like oh my god like I need to watch this, you know, and now you got some rivalries like the, uh, the Edmonton Chicago stuff where it's kind of old school and that's kind of what we were brought up on. And it, it's a different game. And, you know, now I, I think the game has gone away where it's, it's so focused on skill and speed, which, which is great for the game. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and tell you there should be fighting in hockey or there shouldn't be fighting in hockey. I, I really don't care, but, uh, I do think the the star players today aren't as well protected as they once were. And as a guy that's, you know, a skilled guy like yourself, I, I'm sure that if you had a guy on your team that you knew was going to protect you or be there for you, you were, you were pretty confident on the ice and not too scared. You know what I mean? So uh, I think it goes both ways for sure. So. And even these days, it's not just a matter of, you know, a goon going after one of the guys. It's the skilled guys going after the skilled guys. Because right. then that skill guy is is you know worried about the guy protecting the other skill guy. That's kind of part of what what it is too. Oh, I mean, you even look at a guy like Tom Wilson right now in the NHL. I mean, he's not the toughest guy in the world, but in today's NHL, he's he's considered a a, a tough guy, and it's a guy who's making 
five million now because guys are scared of him and he can play, right? This is the new age tough guy, and I think that's the way it should be. I, I don't think there's a really a place in the game for the guy that can't skate and just goes around and fight. I, I don't I don't I never was huge on on that or you know fighting for no reason, but I think a guy that can play, that can hit, that can score, that can fight, like it's it's hard to find in today's NHL. And and if you can do all those things, you're going to get paid because it's it's a rare commodity. Rare. Now. Especially these days, where the grit and toughness to the skill guys, if you can have that, you're gonna you're gonna do really well for yourself, and you're gonna get noticed. I mean, not guaranteeing anything to make the NHL or the pros, but you'll definitely be noticed, and they'll be making decisions. So. I, I think so there. too. When you lost in the OHL finals, um, a little about, I guess, what the team felt and how you felt about losing in the finals and, and how players can deal with that sort of adversity. Um, I'm a big believer in, yes, you need to know how to win by winning, but you certainly can learn from when you lose because, you know, you, you start to push more of what it takes as an individual and team to, to win. Winning's not easy either. For sure, yeah. My uh, my last year in Sudbury before I was traded to uh, to Sarnia, we made it to the uh, conference finals. We were actually the eighth, seventh, or eighth seed going into playoffs. We had a really good team, actually. We have uh, we had the captain of uh, Columbus on our team, Nick Felino. He was there. We had Mark Stahl, who's been in the NHL for a while. Adam McQuaid. Uh, we, we had a bunch of we had a really good team actually and uh, we underachieved all year and then in playoffs uh, I th- think we were the seventh seed we played second seed swept them played the next highest seed swept them uh, ended up winning the conference finals I think in, in five or six games and then we uh, we played Plymouth uh, Whalers who at the team had or at the time had a had a really good team and a, a bunch of guys on the team that went on to uh, really good NHL careers and, and other guys that had really good pro careers. But uh, like you said, I think in order to win, you almost have to lose. Uh, I can remember losing. It, it still hurts to this day longer. I mean, we're so close to, to winning and uh, you, you kind of play it back in your head, you know, like what if we would have done this? What if we would have done that? And, and, uh, you know, it, it motivates you because you, you see how hard it is to win. Uh, I mean, there's there's guys that will play 20 years in the NHL and never come close to winning, you know. And then there's a rookie that will come in and, and win his first year, you know. And uh, I, I think the guys that have lost and have put in the time, when they do actually win, it means that much more to them. Yeah. It's just kind of paying your dues and, and... – grinding at the bit to, to make it or to win it kind of thing right yeah and then going through some of these uh some of these names on this on this team uh michael newberth who played in the nhl there and then jeremy smith smitty playing in uh khl and for the beijing kunlun team um james neal yeah Jericho, Tom Sestito, uh, I think, was on Tom there. Sestito was there. That, that, yeah. Like, that's a, another guy of an example. I think he I, – I don't have his stats in front of me, but you might be able to pull it up there. But I'm pretty sure he was a 40-goal scorer that year. And, and that's a guy that played in the NHL and was, was a tough guy, you know. So I, I think it's important for kids to understand that, like, there's a lot of really, really good junior players and college players that – our third and fourth line players because that's how good the NHL is. Yeah. So, I mean, here I've got it up now and he's six, five, two twenty seven. it says pounds and playing for Plymouth in his final season, he had 42 goals, 22 assists or 64 points. And then he had 17 points in 90 games in the, in the uh, playoffs. So right there. And then he goes to Columbus um he plays a little bit in the AHL um you know most of his stats are are penalty in minutes he's got a few points to go but I mean he's got 121 pims one season for the Canucks he had 213 pims um in the AHL obviously I over like over 150 at times and trying to fight his way up to the to the NHL but it's great just like you said got to be so versatile to make it and it's not just being a you know you're very few are Alex Ovechkin, 
pure goal scorer. Very few are just pure playmakers. Um, you got to be able to do the two A's and and be fast and and be a team kind of guy and bring something to the table. So.